That Bible really had a taser in it. Who would have thought? Before we get started, just want to say thank you guys so much for all your support on the Morbius review. It's currently the number one video on the channel, and for that, I want to say thank you. And if you haven't yet, just go ahead and click that red subscribe button down below. And with that being said, let's get into this review. So Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is the sequel to 2020 Sonic the Hedgehog. And in this film, we see Sonic team up with Tails to go on a worldwide journey to ensure that Dr. Robotnik, played by Jim Carrey, and Knuckles, played by Idris Elba, don't recover the all-powerful Green Emerald. I'll start off with what I like most in this film, and number one has to be Idris Elba as Knuckles. To be honest, I think he completely stole the show here. I think he overshadowed both Sonic and Tails, and I would love to see a standalone film based off of this character, because I think he just did that great of a job voice acting for Knuckles. To be honest, I think this is gonna be a character that most of the audience gravitates to. I really do see audience wanting to see more of Knuckles in the future, and there will be demand for standalone film for Knuckles. I really love this character, and I thought Idris Elba did a great job voicing Knuckles. Knuckles really reminds me of Drax from the Guardians of the Galaxy series, and I say that because he takes everything quite literally, and to be honest, he doesn't really know how to work together with other people, and that reminds me a lot of Drax, because when we first see him in Guardians of the Galaxy, he takes everything quite literally, and he also doesn't know how to work on a team, so when I saw Knuckles and I saw him throughout the film, I really drew a comparison from him to Drax. And to be honest, it was really cool to see his character develop from the beginning to the end. I also really loved Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik. I think he does a lot with this role and I really think he makes it his own. And there's been recent news that he's considering retirement. And to be honest, I really couldn't see another actor playing this role like he does. Like, I don't think he, that they could do it as good as Jim Carrey does because he kind of adds like his own little style to it. And I think he just did a great job. So I really would hate to see him retire from this role. And the people at Sega already said they don't want to recast Dr. Robotnik. So they kind of hope that Jim Carrey comes back. And throughout his performance, you really can't stop but think this is the Jim Carrey from the late 90s, early 2000s. And that was just great to see. He really had fun on the screen. And to be honest, he really killed Dr. Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 just like he did in the original Sonic the Hedgehog that came out in 2020. I also really like Sonic in this movie. He's funny, he's smart, and he has some really epic scenes, especially towards the end. But like I said, I do feel like he got overshadowed by Knuckles. I don't know if it was just because it's the first time we've seen Knuckles in the theater, but I really do think that Sonic didn't shine as much as Knuckles. But Sonic did have his moments, especially the ending. The ending is absolutely insane. If you're a diehard Sonic fan, you're gonna love the ending. I also really enjoyed the humor in this movie. I know it's a kid's movie, but they also threw some humor in there for the adults. So there definitely is enough humor to go around. There's enough for the adults to be entertained. There's enough for the kids to get a chuckle. And to be honest, it's a good balance between being serious and being funny and being in the audience and watching it from an adult's perspective and not just a kid's perspective. It was cool to see them not overdo one or overdo the other. I think they struck the perfect balance in this whole film. The action in this movie is also pretty damn cool. I'm not gonna lie, when we get introduced to Knuckles when he first comes to Sonic House with Dr. Robotnik, it is absolutely insane. And I mean, from there, it only goes up. The stakes are huge in this movie, a lot bigger than the first one, but does bigger always mean better? I also really like the team up between Sonic and Tails. I think they worked really well together, and I think they struck the perfect balance of one helping the other, so it wasn't just Sonic saving Tails all the time, or Tails just saving Sonic. I think they both did their fair share, and I think they made a really good duo in this whole entire film. I also really enjoyed the set design throughout this whole movie. You can't help but to sit there and think, damn, this would make a really cool video game level. And when you're making a video game movie like Sonic is based off the video game, I mean, that's just perfect. That's exactly what they're going for. And to be honest, I think they killed it in this movie. Now for what I didn't like. Number one has to be the runtime. The first Sonic was an hour and 39 minutes. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is two hours and two minutes. And I know it's only about 23 minutes different, but I mean, when you're sitting in the theater, you really do feel all 23 minutes that this one adds on to the other. This movie feels like it could have ended two or three times earlier. And I think if they would have just stopped maybe 20 minutes earlier, that hour 30, hour 40 would have been totally perfect. And I think this movie definitely would have benefited from that. I also didn't really like how this movie felt like two different movies smashed into one. On one hand, you have a Sonic adventure. And on the other, you have a rom-com that's about a wedding. And I feel like they kind of were like, okay, we have a Sonic movie, but now we kind of have to put the other people in the movie. So then we're just going to smash it together and make two movies in the one movie. And therefore we got Sonic the Hedgehog 2. But I can't really complain that much because I guess they somehow cohesively come together in the end. It's somewhat cohesive, 
but I mean, you definitely like the movie more when Sonic's on screen and not the humans. And talking about the humans in this film, I mean, they're not bad, but they're not good. There's nothing memorable. None of the performances are really crazy. Um, I mean, the movie definitely is way better when Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails, and Jim Carrey are on the screen. But I mean, they had to throw the humans in just because they were in the last movie. The humans really helped build the character arcs between Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. So I definitely see why they needed them, but this movie's at its best when Sonic and his friends are on the screen. Also, the CGI in this film can be absolutely awful at times. There's this one point where Jim Carrey's like in a cart, like flying through the sky, and like the out the edging around him is just so bad. Like you can kind of, you can't see the green screen, but you can see like it's kind of like going like this. It just didn't look good. And I, I mean the CGI in the third act look absolutely awful. There's some fire effects that look absolutely horrible. I don't know, maybe they spent all their budget on doing the character designs with Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. But the third act, there's some green lasers and stuff. It just didn't, it just doesn't look good. I also really didn't like what they did to Jim Carrey's voice in the third act. I thought it was unnecessary. I didn't really think it drove the plot forward. Like, Jim Carrey's character does gain some power towards the end of the film. But then they do some weird T-Pain auto-tune to his voice. And it really kind of pulls you out of the movie. And you're like, okay, why are you doing that? To be honest, it's kind of annoying. And I really didn't think there was a need for it. I didn't really care for it. But like I said earlier, as the film winds down, there's like three points in time. You're like, okay, is it going to stop here? No, it keeps going. Is it going to stop there? No, it keeps going. All right, is it going to stop here? No, it keeps going. And it just keeps going, keeps going. And to be honest, there was a scene at a temple that was probably about 40 minutes earlier than the ending where me my friend who was sitting next to me both thought the movie was going to end there but like i said it just kept going and going and going overall this movie definitely suffers from some sequelitis i definitely think sonic the hedgehog 1 from 2020 is better than this film but with that being said i'm going to be giving sonic the hedgehog 2 five stubs out of 10 so right there you know not good not bad right in the middle it's an average film but with that being said there is entertainment and enjoyment to be had here with sonic the hedgehog 2 i'm not saying to go rush out and see it I mean, I do think this movie would be a steal to be on streaming services. So if you can wait, I'd wait. But if you're really a diehard Sonic fan and you know the lore and the stories and you just love these characters or you grew up playing with these characters, I would go see it now. It's everything you want and more, especially the ending. The ending is absolutely insane. Not like always, if you like what you saw here and you want to see more, click up here to see more. That's all I got for today, guys. Peace.